I was broken. I was shattered. I sought external validation because I had no internal self-worth. I was convinced that there was nothing that would ever make me feel whole and complete. These thoughts became my reality. I carried them around and allowed them to rule my life. And honestly, I would have kept walking around like that if I hadn't been forced to wake up. I'd like to tell you how that happened and why it's relevant to you. So my life was going pretty well. My kids were doing great. I was in a healthy long-term romantic relationship. I had overcome debilitating illness. And after years of being on medical disability, I made plans to go back to work full time to my job as a communication studies professor. Then, on April 1st, 2018, we were coming home from a movie and we were hit by a drunk driver. We walked away from the crash with minor physical injuries and went about our lives. However, as the days went on, I felt increasingly panicked. Triggers from my past reappeared and made me frantic out of nowhere. My mind wouldn't stop. I wanted to run. I wanted to escape. I wanted to disappear. I felt myself crumbling right along with these walls that I had carefully constructed. Pieces of old trauma crept in and pierced through me over and over, shattering my happiness and reopening gaping wounds. When I was a little girl, I was sexually abused by a family friend, but I didn't talk about it. The car crash sent me spiraling back to a place where memories of the abuse could no longer be contained. I was forced to deal with everything I had ever experienced. My abuser said that no one would love me and that I would never be good enough and that no one would believe me. I believed him so deeply. I remained silent while trying every way possible to prove that I was lovable, valuable, and worthy. I had no internal self-worth, so I constantly chased that validation from others. So I realized that I've been walking around afraid pretty much my whole life. I've tried to medicate that feeling away through a variety of means, drinking, drugs, sex, therapy, even volunteering. I did whatever I could to make that feeling go away. I was finally tired of fighting myself. I didn't want to manage the pieces anymore. I wanted to be whole. Even though the crash isn't the worst thing that's ever happened to me, it's what made me break. And that's one thing about crisis and trauma. You don't know how someone else will be impacted. You don't know where their breaking point might be. You can't see all of their pieces and what has led them to this point. I never went back to deal with the abuse because I didn't think it should matter. Look at me and how happy I am. Look at how accomplished I am. Why should something from decades ago matter? Here's why it matters. Although I had healed from many things in many ways, I had never addressed my core issues. Those disordered thoughts became my best friends and my coping mechanisms became the carefully constructed walls that simultaneously held me together and held me back. Okay, so why is this relevant to you? We all have pieces of crisis, trauma, and stress, and things that make us feel broken. Events that impact us in ways that others may never understand. Yet we often remain silent and pretend we don't need help. Or we push our pain aside, thinking it simply doesn't matter and it can't hurt us anymore. Then we applaud ourselves for being strong and going forward. Many of us have also created destructive coping mechanisms and disordered thoughts about ourselves. We view ourselves as frantic, messy, and chaotic because of how broken we assume we are. We work hard to have these shiny, happy exteriors while being tortured by vicious cycles of negative self-talk. The amount of mental energy we expend to push these things aside is overwhelming and exhausting. You cannot stop hiding behind your pain if you are unwilling to admit that it exists. You have to acknowledge it, feel it, integrate it, 
and let it go. You have to confront those patterns and break those mental loops. Honestly, for me, this was a lot of work. I really had to get some clarity on my needs. I had to stop being a people pleaser, and I had to stop giving my time and energy away to things that did not make me feel valued, loved, and respected. I had to learn how to set healthy boundaries. So with that, I even had to learn how to stop helping so much. We often prefer helping others because it is easier than looking inside and helping ourselves. That hurts less in the moment, but hurts us more overall. And your behavioral patterns are as dangerous as your mental ones. You have to make the choice to stop, and then you have to work at it every single day. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, we can honestly learn to be more open and aware of ourselves. What are your patterns? What are your triggers? Do you respond or do you react? Are there areas that you need to work on first within yourself? We can be more present for others in a truly open and authentic way if we have more interpersonal awareness of ourselves. Whatever you have experienced is unique and valuable to you. We need unique and valuable perspectives from a multitude of individuals. We need to be able to look around and see connections through our stories instead of seeing differences in our experiences. You need to get to a place where you feel comfortable sharing. You have to feel the feelings. You have to be able to acknowledge them, understand where they are coming from so that you can release them. Expressing what you've been through in a way that feels comfortable and safe is an important part of the healing process. Holding on is holding you back. So for some people, this does mean talking. For other people, it might mean writing or writing music, or perhaps you best your express yourself through art. Whatever the way that you have to get to the root of those emotions and those feelings, do it. OK, so great, yay, sharing. If it's that easy, why don't we all do it? Um, hello, we know why we don't do it. We all know that self-disclosure is risky and it can be embarrassing, and we often worry about the perceptions of others. I'm a communication studies professor. I know all of the theories and everything I'm supposed to do, and it's still terrifying. Some of that risk and fear is because we don't know how others will respond. But I'm here to tell you, you cannot predict the reactions of others, so stop trying. Your experiences are yours alone, and not everyone will understand your perspective. But honestly, that's why we must share. The way you feel when you say something vulnerable, that's how other people feel too. You're not alone. So what if instead of anticipating a negative reaction, we build a world where people know how to give helpful responses? When someone else opens up to you, how can you respond in a way that makes them feel respected and valued and seen and heard? We can collectively heal by providing others responses that showcase kindness, empathy, and compassion. We all grow by learning, and by using your voice, you give others the idea that it is possible for them. By sharing your pieces, you give others the signal that it's okay for them to share too. Each of your lived experiences make you who you are. Every piece has its place. We are not beautifully broken, we are beautiful. We are not uniquely damaged, we are unique. Change the way you think about the pieces and the thought process you're subscribing to. Stop compartmentalizing. Stop hiding. Stop pretending your pain doesn't exist. I don't want to speak for others. I want you to share your pieces on your own terms and in your own way. But maybe you sat here today and thought, I honestly didn't need any of this, and I'm good, or emotions are stupid, or whatever, okay? And maybe you're fine. And if you're fine, I am truly happy for you. But I am here to tell you that not everyone you meet is going to be as fine as you are. And I'm willing to bet that you know someone in your life who's experiencing some of these things. Because this isn't just about my story. This is everyone in some way. I'm just saying it out loud. This is about coping, and it's about communicating. Emotional strength does not mean hiding your emotions. 
Emotional strength means having the courage to showcase that you've had dramatic life events or stressors or crisis, but you can talk about each piece without it re-injuring you. That's how we build emotional strength. That's how we build resiliency. We must get to a place where op openness and emotional expression is the norm, because the norm is that everyone has pieces. The norm is that everyone is dealing with something. We can create a space where talking about crisis, trauma, and stress feels less scary, where we can have conversations about difficult things without it being difficult. I'm going to feel broken again. I'll probably spiral and fall apart. But knowing I'm not alone gives me strength. I am whole. So guess what? This is not a cry for help, and I do not need you to save me. This is a rallying cry. Use your voice. Pick up your pieces and make yourself whole. You have a story to tell.